join me as I work in dialing in my Mega Live and it is one of my first couple times on the water with it and I hope you like the video and as always if you enjoy the video a like share subscribe is always very much appreciated let's get at it and let's see what we can do about finding the settings that are going to work best to make Mega Live the most efficient and hopefully you enjoy the settings and images in this video well it's November 24th and I am at the ramp and there is not another boat in sight. Imagine that. The focus of this video is on locating fish and structure with Mega Live. I will do lure location in another video. We are going to give Mega Live a good test run today and try and dial it in. I am running two Helix 12s, both are Mega Down imaging, and according to the instructions, this is the one I'm going to have the Mega Live. So I am going to power it on first. And I didn't really sort of understand why you they wanted you to power it on first, but I'm thinking because it takes a, a minute or two to detect the Mega Live, it's the best reasoning that I've come up with as to why to start the unit with the Mega Live showing first. This thumbnail from the most popular video on my YouTube channel will show you what the pipes and cribs look like and this is how they look on the Mega 360. So let's compare it to Mega Live. I am just learning how to use Mega Live and it is plugged directly into the back of my Helix 12. I missed these two fish sneaking up from behind the pipes when I was recording. You can clearly see that there are some of the structures up here. I am getting a little bit of interference here, unfortunately. I don't have the choke on, and I may end up having to do that. That goes between the batteries and the chargers. But you can definitely clearly see on the Mega Live that there is structure up here. And I know from past experience that those are cribs and pipes. Looks like we've got some fish moving around up here, just above some of the cribs right now. There is the end of one of the pipes. You can clearly see it. And look at that, there's some fish swimming around right beside that pipe. Oh, look at that. Did you see the tail on that one? All right, I have some structure here and I do have some fish swimming around here. And I believe this is the side of the pipes and it's just taking a little while. There's the pipes. And you can see the round edge of the pipes there. There's one there, and there's some more pipes in there. Oh. This is, as I say, something new, and there's the pipes there, showing them. See some more of the pipes here, and you can see the circles there and there from the pipes. The next two video clips are taken in down mode. Right now, we can see the sides of a couple of the pipes. There is the outline of some of the pipes, you can see them there. The following video clip bounces around a little bit, so I didn't want you to miss seeing the fish. Here's a nice pot of fish suspended above the rock pile. You can see a few fish swimming around here just on the edge. There's one up there. And they're moving around. I'm going to hit the persistence mode. With the persistence mode, you can see this particular fish swimming around that's just moving in there. And it's just buried itself tight into the rocks. We have some fish here. There's a rock pile here. And we have some fish right up in here just above the break swimming around. Get a couple of fish here swimming out one there. A few out here that you can see are hanging around the break. There's a few more there. And it looks like we've got a, a pretty good pod of fish right there swimming around adjacent to that some ledge. Pilings, and we do have some fish in around here that are hanging around in between. I'm going to try and clear this up a little bit. Let's go to contrast. And let's see what happens. As we go down, it gets worse. As we go up, it gets better. I reduced the range to 
35 feet, I believe, and we can certainly see some fish around some of these pilings. And I also heard some fish. You can definitely see this fish moving here. You can see the edge of a rock pile up here. So it is going to show bottom structure as well. After a lengthy trailer restoration project, I'm ready to get back to testing out Mega Live. Playing with Mega Live in simulation mode really helped me dial in my settings and get some practice for the next trip. For today's filming, I have connected Mega Live to my five port Ethernet switch and also added grid lines. I will revisit some of the same areas for comparison purpose. This Mega 360 image and down imaging shot hopefully helps clarify what you're seeing in today's filming. Unfortunately, I still do not have the choke cable attached for today's filming. In the accessories menu, so if you go down to Mega Live and you go down the interference rejection I've set to high here, which I didn't play with the first time. So there's a medium and a low, and you can play with that. So let's just try it on high for now. And underneath the Mega Live installation, I've got my AHRS set to on pitch and roll, which is designed to help stabilize the bottom. So that's what I'm trying now. And so far, so good. I, I really seem to like it. Using the interference rejection feature helped improve the quality of my video footage today. So we are currently in 30 feet of water and you can see some fish scattered around down here and you'll see them just kind of blipping in and out there. And I've added the grid in here, which I practice with simulation mode. So that's the boat position up here, five feet, 10 feet, and I'm out to 35, 40 feet. And this is the depth range going down. So I find that grid system quite helpful and I uh, am definitely going to employ that moving forward. I was definitely impressed with this image of these pipes at 30 to 35 feet away. I believe this is the same image of the crib and pipes from my down imaging video thumbnail. Here's a picture of some of the pipes here. You can see the circles and you see them pretty clear there. Here's a picture of three of the pipes. You can see the circle one, circle two, circle three. Here's the side of the pipes right here. This image of the crib should help you recognize it in the next video clip. Looks like one of our cribs over here. Here's another couple of ends of the pipes. Once again, the Mega Live definitely shows the structure. We've got looks like the sides of a couple of pipes. You see the circle here on the ends of a couple of pipes. So you can definitely find your structure with the Mega Live. We've got some fish floating around in here. A number of them moving through the area. There's some more here. You can see them in various spots. The following four video clips are in down mode. We have some fish moving around here on the bottom. One, two, three, four. Five, six, there's definitely fish moving around this area. Lots of fish moving across. There's some of the pipes right here coming into play. There you can see actually the ends of the pipes, the circles there, circles there, circles there. That was a cool shot. This is color palette 11. See a fish moving around there. There's some fish coming into play right here. There's a good school of fish. So you're getting a real good look at that uh, color palette 11. So. That's definitely a nice looking image. It's just one that I just switched to to try. See the, switch, the fish have switched directions. It's definitely a nice uh, group of fish there. Here again with color pill 11, the fish definitely pull nicely against that uh, black background. It gives a definite nice contrast so you can see them very clearly. So definitely up here again as well definitely a color palette number 11 that I'm going to play with more often. Here's a group of fish that you can see that are suspended up in that roughly about 15 foot range and they're 20 feet out from the boat and the boat is getting a little closer to them. They might have just went out of the way there. You can see one still down there at about 15 feet still moving and it's going to come right under the boat. That's five feet. This is a boat position here. There's another one underneath there. So it is definitely 
showing those suspended fish, which, you know, could certainly alter how you're going to fish them. I would not fish a bottom bouncing bait under that situation. I would try and fish something that would get down towards those fish and I would try and fish it slightly above the fish. I would not try to fish underneath them to get them to go down. Your Mega Live is going to give you clues as to the baits you should use and when and where to throw them. Here's a group of fish suspended up higher. You can see another group over here that are in that, uh, well, once again, pretty close to that 15 foot range, but 10 foot range. So well, I would be tempted to throw a bait uh, at the 10 foot level above those fish and see if I could get them to commit to the higher bait. They will generally come up before they'll go down. Yeah, we definitely have some fish that are suspended. There certainly seems to be more suspended today than not suspended. And I wouldn't know that without the Mega Live. Here's a group of smaller fish here. You can certainly tell that they're smaller fish by the size. You can certainly see the outline of the rock pile here and you can see some fish suspended off of it. Uh, definitely rocks there, rocks there, and fish that were suspended off it. The depth here is 27 feet and right now the bottom is near the middle of the screen and I want to maximize my fish holding area to give me more detail. So I am adjusting the downrange from 40 feet up to 35 feet up to 30 feet and getting as close to 27 feet as possible to maximize the area that is displaying the fish. Right now I am currently in forward display mode but I just pulled up the trolling motor and I changed it to two notches above 40 degrees. So that means that the forward angle is now at 60 degrees. So I'm gonna get out of the forward display mode in automatic and I'm going to change it. And you can see it's 20 degrees, which is not where I'm at. 30, 40, 50, and 60 degrees. So I'm in a little shallower water here. I'm going to take this now I'm going to go and change my downrange and I want to get a much broader view and there I still have the bottom so I'm going to exit out of there at 13 feet and I'm going to use that and that is the way you can customize your Mega Live. The F forward position is set at 40 degrees works well under most conditions each click represents 10 degrees. In shallower water, try forward mode at 50 or 60 degrees. In deeper water, 10, 20 or 30 degrees. The 60 degree mode is giving a different perspective. There's the pilings. And if you scan around, you can look for fish. And that is one of the advantages of having it on the trolling motor. You can just take your foot off the actual switch and just look around. And there's the pilings and look around and see if you see fish in the area that you're scanning. Here's a huge ball of uh, fish. Look at that. I really am not 100% sure what they are, but that is one big ball of fish. Look at them there. Wow, are they tightly bound together. Wow, here is a big ball of fish moving right here at the top. Look at the size of that ball of fish. Editing this video, I realized that two fish came up from the bottom to bust this ball of bait. We have a couple of uh, balls of fish here, and I just can't believe how tightly they are formed together. And I don't know if there's some game fish. I don't see any underneath chasing, but definitely have some fish. This could be a bigger one coming in, but definitely have some fish busting the surface. I suspect that they are shad, but I cannot say for sure. Look at the ball of bait here, and this looks like fish kind of ganging up on them, whether they join up or not. Another huge ball over here, and that's 40 feet away. My boat position is over here at zero feet, and that is 40 feet. Just for fun, let's go to try and... I love seeing the activity, and I, I would have no idea 
that there's such a group of fish. I mean, other than you do see a few fish breaking the surface, but if none of those fish were breaking the surface, you would have no idea that those fish were there. And this is typically an area that I fish on the bottom. So it's always great to have another, you know, piece of electronics that gives you another piece of the puzzle. And Mega Live is certainly doing that. Sometimes it's just fun to sit back and just watch fish doing their thing. Look at that ball of fish. Wow, that's just crazy. And I'm gonna try and see with the sensitivity what I can do. Let's just play with it. If I dial it up, it gets too blurry. As I cut it back, you can see more definition in the fish. And when I get it out of that, you can see a better indication of the size. If sensitivity is too hot, you lose some of that. And boy, are they tightly bound together now. Maybe, oh, there one just jumped right beside the boat. Easy. Yeah. So let's take a look at the contrast here now. And let's bring the contrast down. And it's starting to get a little hazy. Bring the contrast back up. And I can see the whites of the fish. I like that better. And I see more distinctness in that group of fish. And there is the group of fish with uh, my sensitivity and contrast adjustments. I can certainly see the, the whites of the fish a little bit better. And I'm sure that I could dial it in a little bit more, but there's no question that I have a good idea of the size and the number of fish that are in that school. All right, you can see that I've got some fish here. Let's just take a look at the current settings that I am at right now. And I have my Mega Live on forward mode. I'm at the 40 degrees, so I'm the standard setting. My sensitivity at seven, my contrast 11. I have the dynamic contrast off. Currently the forward range is at 45 feet. The down range is at 35 feet. Color palette two, persistence mode is off and the range grid is on. While we're on a group of fish, let's take a look at the persistence mode. And you can see the purple, which is the trail of the fish swimming around. And you can see that they are moving and that's showing there's a couple fish and there's the trail behind it. You got some fish up here. And that's the advantage of persistence mode. Let's try the persistence mode at a different setting. So let's go to medium. You can definitely see this school of fish. And it also helps indicate size and numbers. Oh, look at that, that's very cool. Let's go to high and let's exit out. And you can see a lot more of the purple pink color. I don't know if you heard that fish just jump in front of the boat, but oh, look at that, those fish coming down in there. Oh, is that super cool? And there's a fish going away from the school. Maybe they're spooked by the boat a little bit, but look at all that movement. So if you're not sure, you know, as to whether they're fish or not, or you want to kind of see how they're swimming, then that persistence mode is definitely helpful. The persistence trail is a useful tool to help you locate the path of the fish or a lure. This is the persistence mode on low, and it just gives you enough to sense the movement. I don't think I would generally keep it on any more than low, but to each their own, it's personal preferences for everybody. Love the rainbows of the colors, and uh, it's just super cool to see the activity of the fish and where they're at and what depth they're at and the numbers. It just gives you more information, adds more pieces to help you solve the puzzle. You gotta love it when you can get onto a nice school of fish. Uh, they may not be the target species you are looking for, but often finding the bait is the key to catching those game fish that you want. And in this particular case, I would love it if I saw, you know, a bunch of big fish busting through it. Well, I've only got about five or six hours with the Mega Live, and I'm gradually dialing it in and figuring it out. And unfortunately, today is December and it is the 14th, and I have a feeling that this is gonna be my last time out on the water, but you can bet that come springtime and through the ice, I am going to work at dialing this in. And I am quite happy with what I am seeing so far. And 
as always, if you find this video enjoyable or helpful, a like, share, subscribe is always very much appreciated. Take care. Bye for now.